All right, let's see. How do I start this? Okay, welcome back. I convinced. Good morning. <laughs> Okay, so he makes fun of me. <laughs> so I convinced Jason to do a update. We've had a lot of questions. I've had several messages of people asking, do you have an update? How's Jason doing? We also get um, a lot of comments on other videos uh, where they see Jason in the background doing all his little DIY work. And um, so we just thought we'd come on here, give a little update because we haven't in a couple months. and. I don't know, I wish that I could come on here and say that there have been no changes, but I can't get on here and say that. You wanna start there? You're talking. <laughs> I'm talking today. Okay, that's how this is gonna go. <laughs> Jason. So, <clears throat> a couple things we wanna address in this video. Um, let's go back to the last video. We were going to a new, not a new neurologist, another neurologist for movement for his, um, like his tremors and his, uh, muscle rigidity and all that. So we went to this new doctor and we didn't like him <laughs> at all, like at all. If there's one thing that I wish that we could do is like break the stereotype of people with dementia. The first thing he said when he walked in the room was, well, you don't look like someone who has dementia. I wanted to literally throat punch him. <laughs> How'd you feel? You gotta talk. I was confused and I got pretty angry with him because I was sitting there like, what's somebody with dementia look like? Yeah. I don't look any different. I'm not drooling on myself. That's the big misconception that we talk about a lot. People think that just because you have dementia or Alzheimer's that you literally sit in a chair and drool all day. No, that's not how that's not how this works. Um, we actually, if you get a chance, we watched um, The World's Toughest Race. It's on Amazon. And there is a man on there who has Alzheimer's. And he does phenomenal. Like if you, if they hadn't told us or showed us a little bit of the behind the scenes, you would have never known. And I don't know, this really need to break the stereotype of all that. Well, so some of the examples of that guy, and which is very similar, I can sit here and have a conversation and it seemed to be normal, but I just can't remember simple things. And for example, with him, he was crushing it on the field, but he can't remember how to zip his jacket or tie his shoes and... He had to be reminded to eat and those kind of things. Yeah. Which, those are all the behind the scenes things that a lot of people don't see. If I do not keep an eye on Jason, he will not eat. It is so bizarre. Mm -hmm. um, but in the evening, you like to eat. Mm -hmm. um, but during the day, I'll be like, wait, what have you eaten? I don't know. Like, you haven't eaten anything. And so, just a lot of stuff like that that people just don't realize. What, what do you think the biggest thing is? Because you know what I think the biggest thing is. My temperament. It's, it's just... Hold on. It's not friendly. It's rough. It's been really rough. Um, I don't know. Gone through our whole marriage and Jason's never been one to yell at me or say, you know, just mean things. And um, back a while ago, I mean, he would maybe have these little outbursts, maybe like once a week. And now it's like, what, several times a day. It's not, it's not once an hour, but it's more frequent than that. <laughs> I am very appreciative that he um, still has the ability to recognize that he does it after. And he... It feels bad, but in the moment, I don't even realize I'm doing it. It's just, you know... And it's stupid things, like... Uh, I can just be having a conversation. And... Uh, what, I don't even... Well, I don't remember. <laughs> But I was like argumentative, like I would never say I'd do that, I wouldn't do that, and then... Oh, I had an appointment that was in an area of town that there's only on-street parking, and he had told me in normal Jason temperament and just uh, personality, he was like, well, I'll just, I'll just go with you and then I can just sit in the car and then that way you don't have to worry about parking. And so, yay, that's so sweet, that's typical Jason. And then the day we were going, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Why would I do that? That's so stupid. Uh, I mean, it, it gets like, he goes from like zero to 10. Uh, and it's just like, oh, 
okay, don't go with me. It's just like, it really, it's hard. I can't help it. <laughs> I did go. He did go, and he, because I, he finally remembered, something made you trigger your memory that you said that. Yeah. 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 So that was hard. Okay. So, basically that's just, you know, the day-to-day -day living, and caregivers know that they're the ones who get crapped on the most. Um, he certainly doesn't act like that when usually when other people are around too much. No, but I also find myself avoiding going around people a lot more. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Basically, that is um, kind of how things have been going. Uh, we do have something that we haven't shared with anyone. I haven't even really posted about it or anything, but um, I quit my job. <laughs> so I quit my job and I get to stay here. And um, at first I missed it, but now I don't. <laughs> and um, I'm doing my part to make her time here be required full time. Yes, it's good though. I feel so much um, better being here with him all the time, and I think that's also part of it. We're here, we're together 24/7. We've never had that in our lives. That's really, really different, you know. But um, yeah, so we went on a few trips, and we have quite a few trips planned. So I'm super excited about that, and. Anything else? So I guess the one thing I wanted to, like, people with this, don't treat them differently. They're going to have bad episodes, but they're not drooling on themselves and they're not dumb. You know, a little bit of empathy goes a long way, but you don't have to coddle to them. The whole demeanor that that doctor came in with was, I'm going to, f I really am not even going to evaluate you or your personal situation. I'm going to take your physical look of how you look when I come into this room. No test results and I'm just going to assess based on your age and physical looks that nothing's wrong with you. That was, and that's how he went. And then he went through all of the things that were like, oh, well that's because of this. Oh, that's because of uh, PTSD. PTSD and oh, that's because of this. And I'm like, did I just take a five year step back in time? We've so moved beyond that. It's so beyond being PTSD and or anything. I mean, oh my goodness. It's just crazy. And so, oh, he was super frustrating. So basically the big frustration part was he kept looking at this uh, cognitive test. That, uh, what's that co test called? Um, that's close enough. Just say cognitive. It's this cognitive test that Jason took. And there wasn't a big change in two years on that test. But that test, our neurologist who specializes in it, said that is not a big, not a big indicator of anything. But yet this neurologist who doesn't specialize in it was very focused on that and was like, well, it doesn't look like to me that you've declined in two years. And that's where I came right back at him and said, you don't get to say that. You have no idea. I was like, I shut him down. And once when I got irate like that and said it, he just shut up. For those out there who are dealing with this kind of thing, you really need to stand up for, you know, who you're taking care of because you are their only voice and just don't get ran over. That's the hard part. If you see and know what's happening with your loved one that you're caring for on a daily basis, you're the only one that can truly assess how things are going. No one else gets to see your fun side three times a day before lunch. <laughs> <laughs> that you're <laughs> that you're changing and just because you can you know suck it up buttercup and be on your best behavior when you're and sitting in a doctor's office waiting and apparently this look oh hello doctor <laughs> says you're fine and have nothing wrong with you <laughs> exactly so you know you have to have someone that actually knows and sees. So if you have, if you, once you start going through this, my opinion matters to a point, but my doctor, my main doctor, who's awesome, she's less, she's very interested in what I have to say, but what I have to say comes after she's talked to Leslie alone for a half an hour. Yes. They want to know without me listening, because they know I can hear, not dumb and neither is anybody else how are things really going 
what do we need to do? And then, and then I come in with all of them and we talk briefly about whatever. how you feel yeah. and where we're going next and what we're going to do. And yeah. that's a great way because a lot of times the caregiver doesn't want to just sit there and talk about all the bad stuff in front of you. You know what I mean? Well, like, yeah. Sometimes you're not even aware that you're doing it. Yeah. I'm painfully aware that I'm doing it because it gets brought to my attention. Did I say three times a day before lunch? <laughs> I am going to continue to bring it to your attention as long as you're going to pay attention to it because it does help. It does. It Cuz he's such a sweet guy. You have to bring it to their attention cuz you're not I'm not aware that I'm even doing it and I'm not trying to be mean and it's almost like you have to snap me back to center. Mhm. Mm and it doesn't happen right then. I can assure you that I'm not deliberately doing it but you have to get my attention and tell me that, or tell the person, which is me, that this isn't appropriate behavior. And nobody says that. She's not going to tell me, that's not appropriate behavior. <laughs> I did get on to you because you told me to shut up. That is not something we ever do. We have ever done that. First of all, like I wouldn't even allow our children to say shut up. I never said shut up to my kids growing up. And he said that to me the other day, very forcefully. And that broke my heart because that was like out of the realm of what I'm used to hearing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and part of it is uh, she has to ask me what I'm doing a lot because I wander aimlessly sometimes. And started to make lunch, went and did 50 things. Hey, Jason, you're eating lunch. Like to get him back. And he's annoyed. It, it annoys me because. I don't feel like I'm being scatterbrained. I don't feel like I'm wandering aimlessly. And I feel like she's questioning me like, not in an accusatory way, but I take it that way. Like, what do you think I'm doing? I'm like, and then it, it'll it take me several times before I even realize, oh yeah, I uh, toasted bread and got lunch meat out and have, you know, seven cold things sitting on the countertop that have been there for almost an hour because I, got distracted because the toaster took too long and wandered off. Yeah, and yeah, and, the, and you'll get agitated at me asking him, well, what are you doing? Well, where are you going? Well, why are you doing that? And it's just because his thought process is not correct and he gets annoyed at me. Because I think you feel like it's because I don't trust you, but it's like, I don't know what it is. Well, so I feel like, so, the dilemma is my mind's not working right and I feel like I'm in control of the situation and I have everything going right. And the reality is I'm not aware of the chaos I'm leaving in my wake and unless you bring it to my attention I won't even know that I left stuff sitting out. Yeah. So, yeah, my energy level has dropped a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, so. The power of editing videos. Um, you guys see him doing, helping me with the bathroom and stuff like that, but you guys don't realize that there was a lot of, sometimes pain behind some of that and a lot of pushing and a lot of like, does a little bit, takes a nap. Does a little bit, gotta sit down. It's like, and usually if he does one to two things a day, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Like, really go get him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I'm, I do push him to do stuff, do something, because I know that using his brain and stuff is good for him, and he always feels so good after he does it. Mm -hmm. Like, he, you enjoy the accomplishment, mm -hmm. even if it took a long time, I feel like. Overly complicated things are going to take me an awful long time. Yes. And he, finally, this time with the bathroom, um, he recognized that one thing was overly complicated. He called in a friend. He got help. Before, he probably would have tried it by himself and it would have turned into 70 trips back and forth to Lowe's. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I called in a friend and he helped me fix it in like an hour. Yeah. It was amazing. It was great. It was so, so helpful. Shout out to Dennis. <laughs> All right, well, I kind of feel like that's where we're at. Um, it's getting a little bit harder to get Jason to want to sit down and do these videos. I didn't know how that would go. So uh, we had originally said I would try and do a monthly update. It's been more than a month. And I finally was like, can we do an update? 
just because people have been asking. So. If you guys want to see the videos, let her know. Yeah. Maybe that'll sway my decision. I don't know. Yeah, help me out. Let me know if you want to see more. I can try and convince him. I don't know if it'll be monthly, but we'll see. But we just had some things to share that so people can see the reality of this. This There's a lot that people don't see. So. Thanks for watching. Don't forget that like bell, subscribe, and tell your friends. Oh, <laughs> well, we gotta tell your friends. That's a new one. You're so cute. I love you. I love you. <laughs>